Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Anetta Felix. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed regrets over the recent killings in Katsina and Bornu states. The president was speaking during a televised Democracy Day address on Friday. President Buhari, however, assured that concerned security agencies will pursue the perpetrators and bring them to swift justice. All the local governments that were taken over by Boko Haram insurgents in Borno, Yobe, and Adamawa have long been recovered and are now occupied by indigents of these areas who are hitherto forced to seek a living in areas far from their ancestral homes. The total collapse of the economies of these areas, which constituted a threat to our food security, has also been reversed with the gradual recovery of farming and other economic activities. I regret recent sephardic incidents with the tragic loss of lives in Katsina and Borno states as a result of criminals taking advantage of COVID-19 restrictions. Security agencies will pursue the perpetrators and then to swift justice. I implore state and local months to rebump their intelligence assets so that the security agencies can nip in the bud any planned attacks in remote rural areas. I send my heartfelt condolences to all the relatives and the communities affected. As part of the strengthening of our internal security architecture, the Ministry of Police Affairs was created. Among others, government has expanded the National Command and Control Center to 19 states of the Federation, resuscitated the National Public Security Communication System, and commenced the implementation of the community policing strategy. Still in his Democracy Day address, President Muhammad Buhari commiserated with Nigerians who have lost their families and friends to the COVID-19 pandemic. The president said his government is committed to building a nationwide public health care system that will help the country overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and prepare for any future eventualities. There is no doubt that this pandemic has affected the global economy and all known socio-economic systems. It has also brought grief and pain to families that have lost their loved ones. Like many Nigerians, I feel the grief and pain, not only as your president, but also as someone who has lost a close member of my staff and some relatives and friends. In order to have a robust national response, I approved a presidential task force on COVID-19 to provide guidance and leadership in tackling the pandemic nationwide. State governments also constituted their own COVID-19 task forces. Complementing this was the establishment of a National Emergency Operations Center responsible for providing technical and professional guidance in the national response. The overall objective of the CTF COVID-19 is to ensure that the pandemic does not overwhelm our health systems while ensuring that we maintain an effective case management system to help in containing the spread of the virus. On his part, President of the Nigerian Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has felicitated with Nigerians on the occasion of this year's Democracy Day on June 12th. In his message late on Thursday, the Senate President said June 12th has become a metaphor in Nigeria 
for free, fair and credible elections. Lawan said the heroic demonstration of patriotism by the Nigerian voters on June 12, 1993 will continue to inspire generations of their compatriots to promote national unity and defend democracy in Nigeria. He urged all Nigerians to embrace a healthy democratic practice devoid of desperation and violence while wishing Nigeria an eternal peace, unity and prosperity. Nigeria on Thursday recorded its highest daily figure of COVID-19 yet, as 681 new infections were announced by the NTDC. With the latest updates, the total tally of infected people in the country rose to 14,554 from 13,873 reported on Wednesday evening. Previously, the highest daily number recorded was 663 on June 9. Five deaths are recorded from various from the virus on Thursday, bringing the total number of confirmed deaths from the virus to 387. The health agency in a tweet on Thursday night said the new cases were reported in 17 states, including Lagos, Rivas and Ogun. Rivas State has recorded 51 new cases of COVID-19. This brings the total number of infections in the state to 454. The figure is the highest number of confirmed cases in a single day since the state recorded its index positive case on March 27th. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control released the latest figure in its verified Twitter page late on Thursday. The NCDC said that 12 states and the FCT recorded the new cases with Lagos accounting for 345, followed by Rivers at 51 cases. Now to news in politics. On Wednesday, June 17th, the Federal High Court in Benin City, Edo State, will, in, will hear the suit seeking to stop the APC from adopting the direct mode of primary to nominate the party's governorship uh, in Edo State. The presiding judge, Mohammed Omar, had jarred in the suit on Thursday, restraining himself from hearing the matter, following an appeal and application for stay of execution filed by the APC. The primary has been fixed for June 22nd. The suit was filed by factional vice chairman of the party, Pastor Kenneth Asekome, and a governorship aspirant, Matthew Udorekome. Counsel to the defendants, Roland Otaru, told the court that it lacks the jurisdiction to have urged the parties to maintain the status quo in its earlier ruling, adding that as a result, they decided to head for the appeal court. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC Makodi Zonal Office has begun investigating Paul Hemba, aide to the Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn, over allegations of misappropriation of funds to the tune of 42 million naira. The EFCC alleges that Hemba transferred the sum of 42 million naira from the official account of the Office of the Special Advisor on Security Matters to his personal bank account and withdrew the money on July 2019. The said sum was meant for disbursement to the Benue State Vigilante Group, BSVG. The governor aide also allegedly abused his office between October 2018 and May 2020 by fraudulently paying the sum of 20 million monthly allocation meant for the BSVG into the personal accounts of the commandant of the group, George Mbassi, instead of using the official account of the group. The alleged offense, if established, violates Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011. British Airways, EasyJet and Rainer Air on Friday said they have launched legal action against the UK government over its flawed mandatory 14-day quarantine for international travellers. The UK introduced the policy earlier this week requiring British residents and overseas visitors to comply with the 14-day self-isolation rules or face a €1,000 fine or prosecution. The two-week quarantine measure has have a sparked condemnation from the alien aviation sector, which has been paralyzed by the pandemic since March. The three airlines said the policy will have a devastating effect on British tourism and the wider economy and destroy thousands of jobs, and they've asked for the judicial review to be heard as soon as possible. They also argue that the government failed to consult with them and that there was no scientific evidence provided for such a severe policy. Let's take a break here to return shortly. President Mohamed Buhari has received the report of the Economic Sustainability Committee 
headed by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo in the State House. The President constituted the committee in March to come up with an agenda aimed at providing succor to Nigerians following the dangerous pandemic by the outbreak of COVID-19. Presented a report on Thursday, Osimbajo told the President and Cabinet members present that Nigeria can turn the pandemic into an economic victory. We decided on a strategy hinged on Mr. President's mantra to, quote, produce what we eat and consume what we produce. In other words, to create millions of new jobs, we need to focus on encouraging local production, local services, local innovation, and emphasize the use of local materials. Nigeria and Nigerians can produce our food, build our houses, construct our roads, using local materials in almost all cases. If we must import, it must be to support local production. We have therefore recommended that we must carry out mass programs that create jobs and utilize local materials. Such will include a, a mass agricultural program, which is expected to bring between 20,000 and 100,000 hectares of new farmland under cultivation in every state of the Federation. It is clear that businesses face the prospect of collapse or crippling losses. So we must prepare for difficult times while government continues to seek ways of supporting businesses and industry. I note with particular interest the focus of the plan on A, stimulating the economy through a mixture of government spending and CBN structured loans to support businesses, especially sectors facing difficulties as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the, result, and the resultant socio-economic lockdown. Burundi's constitutional court will decide who takes over as interim leader following the sudden death of President Pe Nkuruziza earlier this week. Following an extraordinary meeting, the cabinet agreed that the constitutional court should guide the country and show modalities of filling the post. According to the constitution, the Speaker of the House is expected to take over, but there's been uncertainty as to who's in charge. The government announced on Tuesday that 55-year-old Nkuruziza had died of a heart attack and no date has yet been fixed for his burial. FIFA has announced that it will allow leagues to open their transfer window before the current late season has been completed. The body said this on Thursday, adding that it has passed a series of temporary amendments to help deal with the havoc to the football calendar caused by the health crisis. Transfers will be permitted before the season ends, but clubs will not be able to find new signings until the end of the season, until the next season begins. And that is on the newsroom at this hour. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.